Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. I just got back from E3 at the Los Angeles Convention Center. I've never been to E3 before. I was very impressed. I certainly wasn't going to spend two hours in line waiting to play the new Watch Dogs game. But I do have to say, I was super impressed with the production value that goes into the video game booths. Is that what they are? Uh, displays? I would have to say that probably the most expensive booth at NAB like Canon or Sony, would it be the cheapest booth at E3? These things are insane. They had actors dressed as Fortnite people. They had, you know, built mini cities. Um, yeah, production value wise, it was on scale with a very big movie. Thank you to B&H for getting me an E3 pass. Um, those guys sell video games and video game consoles if anyone's interested. They also sponsored this video, so thank you. But today I wanted to talk about video games, how they affect movies and production on film sets um, and really just generally the kind of intersection between the two. Something I noticed straight away at E3 was tone. Um, you can see it most clearly in the color palettes of some of these um, video games and their trailers. Everything from the monochrome um, of this new shooter, which is almost black and white, all the way to the kind of day glow bright pinks and purples um, of Fortnite or the vector graphics of Borderlands 3. I think video game producers use this as a way to attract smaller children um, and kind of offset the violence so that it makes it a little bit more palatable to parents to have their 10 year old playing a game where the goal is to murder other players. That would be a much harder sell if it was kind of gritty and realistic by, by making it cartoony and sort of outlandish. It's a little bit more um, presentable. Setting tone and color palette in films is a huge part of directorial decision. It's not something you think of when you're making a film, um, but when you see a film where it's done well, it, it's really um, obvious. Sometimes movies play against tone. Uh, Watch Dogs 3, I think, has this interesting thing where it's about you know government overreach and uh, an oppressive state, but it's all sort of bright purples. I think they borrowed this from Suicide Squad. It's supposed to be a very dark movie about some of the nastiest villains in the uh, DC universe. And so to lighten it and make it more appealing to children, they used very bright colors. Actually, that was one of the movies where the tone didn't really land. It sort of um, didn't know whether it was a cartoon or a gritty reboot. Uh, I do play a lot of games, uh, mainly Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, but I really think it's interesting how sort of how sort of harmless games are. And I don't mean that in a sense of if kids play them, they won't end up being serial killers. I mean that they are very straight down the middle um, as far as their politics go. Most successful films have, you know, they pick a big question to explore. They really take an opinion on the characters and the, char the world that we live in. Games, are, I feel, are the opposite, maybe because they're aimed at a younger audience um, than a lot of films are, but they don't really want to say anything about the questions that they raise. Uh, Far Cry 5 is a good example of that. It, you know, people wanted to say something about you know, religious extremism or gun control or um, the Second Amendment or cults. It ended up just going straight down the line and having bad gun owners and good gun owners. It just sort of made sure to um, cover every exception without really um, making any kind of statement. Bioshock Infinite was, uh, was a game that actually had some teeth. There are very few AAA games um, that really rise to the level of authorship that movies do, um, and I'm not really sure why. Game directors aren't the kind of celebrities that film directors are. They don't really get the sort of um, control to make the game that they feel as a personal expression. And I think that this means that games can't take as many chances, can't be as powerful a media as films are. and. I think that's to their detriment. Performance capture is really coming of age. Uh, John Bernthal's part in the new Ghost Recon trailer um, is pretty great. Uh, it's basically a scene from a film done with motion capture. Ghost Recon Wildlands was another game um, that I felt could have had uh, something to say about the war on drugs, but didn't. Just sort of connected the dots and did a perfectly pedestrian spin on um, the war on drugs. Keanu Reeves was front and center at E3 this year. 
he's in the new Cyberpunk 2077 trailer, um, but only for a second. We don't really get to see much of his performance capture. I'm excited to see it uh, when it comes out in another trailer, maybe probably around Christmas since it's an April game, I think. The trailer for this was pretty amazing. It's Project Red, the same guys that made um, the Witcher games, but it's set in the future. It's a whole new IP, um, which is something that's really rare. Most games are sequels or remakes or reboots, much like films. So to start out with a whole new story um, and have the star power of Keanu Reeves and to have the production value that these guys have is rare. I just did a video a couple of weeks ago on establishing shots and the first shot in this trailer is phenomenal. You know, we start on this drone and we track down to find a car covered in bullet holes and straight away you're thinking, wow, what's the story here? Um, the camera moves a little bit, but then the door opens and the guy gets out. Um, when we pan up and we get to see his gun, we get to see his tag, cab pulls away, he walks in and we pan up to see where he's arrived at. I mean, there are so many um, great pieces of information in a single shot that are all linked together in this in this seemingly effortless camera move that's just just a masterpiece of um, blocking and lighting and uh, establishing. It's it's beautiful to see. The rest of the trailer is not that bad either. These game trailers uh, cost a lot of money to produce, somewhere in the area of a million dollars a minute. So this five or six minute trailer cost five or six million dollars. Um, and I think the money's on screen, it shows. Uh, it is really, um, when you're animating a CGI character with a CGI camera, nothing's left to chance. Um, you have to do all the work. And as a result, you get this amazingly considered, um, powerful way of telling stories if you know what you're doing. And obviously the Project Red team does. I think it's really interesting that in a film we're outside the world looking in and our craft as filmmakers is to try and draw um, the viewer into this world mentally. Whereas in a video game, you're already in the world, you're playing along with it. And the craft is then to create a story um, and, and tell a story um, that doesn't compete with your, the problems that the game gives you to solve um, and doesn't distract from that. So that's my little look at uh, E3, how video games are affecting filmmaking, and generally um, how the kind of, the two, for a long time we thought they would merge um, and you just get one story told in different ways. But I think what's actually happening is, you know, films are definitely becoming more video game-like in some respects. Video games are definitely looking to film for a lot of their aspects but I do see them developing on separate tracks, uh, at least for the next um, couple of generations. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.